we're just about a week into the season, so I figured it's time for my first power rankings of the year. And yeah, things are going to be up and down. They're going to be a little bit crazy. Some teams are going to be at the top when at the end of the year, they're probably not, but they just started off the year well. Other teams are struggling right now, and they'll be much higher up later in the year. But today, you know, it's a bit about reactionary takes. It's a bit about being cautious as well. And talk about teams who are still going to be good despite having bad records, but also teams that have really good records who aren't going to be great in the future. And honestly, I still have a lot of games to catch and a lot of teams that I've yet to watch, but yeah, I'm going to try my best. I've been very busy to the point where I can't even, I still haven't gotten the chance to watch Suns versus Lakers yet. Like, uh, yeah, I'm going to get caught up. I swear to God, I will. But today I want to talk power rankings. And all this is just my opinion. Let me know what y'all think. Let me know what you guys would change, what you guys would do. And uh, yeah, hopefully y'all won't be too mad about this. It's, you know, it's week one. I don't think anyone should be going a bit, you know, too crazy. A lot of this is just reacting to week one and talking about what's happened so far. Anyways, let's start it off with the Jazz. It's going to be a little bit boring at the top because we've seen these teams at the top and they really haven't changed much. Uh, a lot of this is just going to be based off of where do I see them finishing in the regular season and, you know, basing it off of this first week of play. And the Utah Jazz have been the same Utah Jazz team. Uh, and uh, they've done it even without Rudy Gay, their new acquisition. And the things I would point out, you know, just having roster turnover and just being a consistent team, it's going to lead you to win a lot of games. And I expect the Jazz to find themselves at the top of the power ranking for the next few weeks. And they're not going to get in the thumbnail at all because it isn't exciting because they're always just going to be the best team. Anyways, Eric Pascal, adding him as a small ball five. Not honestly sure how much they've gone to it so far this season, but it does add a new dimension to the team. And he just does a lot of good things for the team at the five. I think that's a really great acquisition for them. Just seeing how he played in preseason, that sort of thing. And I expect them to hold this top spot for quite a while, if I had to guess. The Bucks are at number two, and they've got a whole lot of injuries, especially to their depth. I mean, it's not really even their depth. They've lost Drew Holiday, Brooke Lopez. They've been playing extended minutes of Sandra Malkalashvili and Georgia's Kalitzakis. Like, come on, these dudes shouldn't really be playing. Thanasis Antetokounmpo has been... He hasn't been terrible, but he's also not, you know, exactly a guy you would want in your rotation for the first three games of the season. And uh, just to be aware... I don't believe either of these teams played a game tonight, but uh, all these teams' records are just going to be based off of the first week, not including tonight. I know this is releasing, you know, when just about every game is done for the night already. I think the Clippers game is the only one that's going on right now, but it's based off of, you know, uh, not today's games, all the games before today. So yeah, uh, the Bucks, quite a few injuries, but they're still really good with Giannis and Chris Middleton. They're still going to win a lot of games. They're still 2-1, and one, and it's really hard to stop this team, especially with all their injured players coming back. You know, dropping that game to the Heat makes sense when you consider, you know, the Heat were operating at pretty much full strength, and the Bucks were missing Drew, they're missing Brook Lopez, they're missing... You know, their, their bench was just bad. He is just a really bad group of players to put out there. Uh, it just made a lot of sense why they lost by 40. Well, that's still a pretty significant loss, but yeah. Injuries are the only thing that are holding them back. They're still having a great start to the year. The Nuggets, they continue to win games even without Jamal Murray. Jokic is still putting up pretty much MVP numbers. And I know they just dropped the game to the Cavs. There's quite a few undefeated teams that are listed on here as undefeated who did drop losses tonight. And the Nuggets are one of them. But just based off of this first week of play, Nikola Jokic is great. And it's the same Nuggets team pretty much. Adding Jeff Green is a solid depth piece. But otherwise, there isn't a lot to talk about here. You know, replacing Paul Mills up with Jeff Green losing JaVale McKee, who didn't even play that much. It's pretty much the same team, and they still win games. The Warriors are number four. They look really good, and all those pieces they have in their rotation are really contributing. You know, Jordan Poole has been great. Andrew Wiggins has been pretty darn good. We know Dre. We know Kevon Looney playing his, you know, starting minutes, and then, you know, bringing in other guys. It's the small ball five. Nemanja Bielitsa has been amazing. And I'm realizing that I forgot to put him on here, but he should be on here because Nemanja Bielitsa has been fantastic. 
Uh, what a great addition by the Warriors, adding that guy. I, I'm, I just, I, I did not know he was that type of player who fits in so seamlessly with, with the team. He kind of feels like a Draymond Green kind of light addition. Not a great defender, but a good, a better three-point shooter. You know, he's just good at passing the ball. He's good at driving, finding the open man, making plays happen. And that's exactly what you need with the bench unit with Stephen Curry out. And yeah, Bealitz is just such a great pickup. And Stephen Curry is looking like he might be putting on an MVP season. So, uh, yeah, he also won Player of the Week. Let's talk about another Player of the Week right here with Miles Bridges and the Hornets, my thumbnail team of the week. They did just drop a game to the Celtics in overtime. But, yeah, Miles Bridges has been crazy. I think he averaged 27 points per game to start the season. He had 25 tonight as well. So, yeah. That guy's gone insane, but it's really been LaMelo Ball who's really impressed people. Uh, he's just extremely composed as a second-year guard, and he's just clearly leading his team to winning basketball despite being, you know, an extremely young player, and that's a very good sign for the Hornets. Although their roster construction might not be the best in the league, you're relying on Kelly Oubre to play 43 minutes for you, you know, it's, it's going to be a bit of struggle, but... Yeah, I mean, LaMelo Ball hitting 7 of 14 threes, I think he had another good three-point shooting game, is more than a promising sign. You're like, that's such an amazing thing to see. That's one of his bigger areas of weakness has now been seemingly corrected. Uh, that's great. And the Hornets are set up to be very good. But yeah, 3 and 1, I can't put them on the same tier as those other teams, especially in a loaded Eastern Conference. But the Hornets look very good to start the year definitely a team that i need to tune into a game because yeah uh, uh yeah i need to see this team I need to see this team especially their defense i don't really to know too much about how great they've been defensively so i, I need to see that happen brego did a pretty good jo job of scheming last year but yeah i mean it, it struggled a lot at times especially playing small ball quite a lot and yeah, I've yet to see how Miles Plumlee plays with this team quite yet. But anyways, if you made it this far, maybe consider hitting subscribe because you probably want to see more of my content. So yeah, hitting subscribe is the best way to do that. Anyways, next up, the Miami Heat. Tyler Hero. Tyler Hero is going nuclear and Kyle Lowry is a great fit. Yet another team there. I'm just like, I need to watch a game this week. I know I've been extremely busy this week. I haven't had the chance. The Heat are a team that I have in my absolute must-watch list. You know, Tyler Hero, great. Kyle Lowry, he missed a game. That's why they lost Steven. It's because he was not there. But yeah, Lowry's been great. And they're going to have one of the top seeds in the Eastern Conference, especially if the Nets continue to struggle. You know, this Heat team is setting up to be great, be a top seed, and win a whole lot of games, set themselves up well in the playoffs. And yeah, that you know, the offense is working well, the defense is working well. When you have those two factors combined, like, you win basketball games. It's as simple as that. New York Knicks. I wanted to point out, Evan Fournier has done a great job so far on both sides of the court. Uh, I think probably a lot of us had seen that clip of Evan uh, Fournier just running around making, you know, putting in so much defensive effort in that, like, late overtime game against the Celtics. And yeah, I mean, bringing defensive activity along with his, you know, scoring ability in conjunction with all the other weapons that this team has is a great sign. Also, RJ Barrett has been a noticeably, noticeably a lot better defensively. Along with Julius Randle playing well again for another season, the Knicks are stacking up to win a whole lot of games again. You know, they're not going to be as bad as a lot of people are projecting them to be. I think I was one of the people who projected them to be bad, but right now they still look good and I can't deny it. The Sixers at eight. Without uh, Ben Simmons, they've still done well, led by Joel Embiid, but can they get consistent point guard play? Right now, Tyrese Maxey's been getting the starts, but is that enough for you at the point guard position? It's a really non-traditional point guard fit. I would call Maxey more of a two guard at this point, but yeah, it's... It's a team I have a lot of question marks about, especially in terms of continued success. Can they be effective in the absence of a true point guard? What about Ben Simmons? Is he going to return? Is he going to be traded away for some other player who can fill into that role? There's a lot of questions there, but yeah, that point guard position is the main thing that worries me. They've got a lot of good wings. They got a good forward and center combination of Harris and Embiid. It's that point guard position that stands out, and I'm 
not really betting on consistent play from that position, just looking at the Sixers roster, and that can really drag down your record having a bad point guard. The Grizzlies at 9, John Rand has been crazy to start the year and they would have been 3-0 if it wasn't for that one missed free throw by John Rand at the end of the Lakers game. They've been fantastic, I just made a full video about them, I don't think I have a whole lot else to say right now. The Suns at 10, I need to do a full video on them, especially after I watch that Lakers game, but they have had a slow start and having, you know, three games in four days is a really tough combination, especially against three of the top teams in the league. I mean, although only one of them made it ahead of them in the power rankings, they're still very good Western Conference teams that they lost to. And, you know, it's a bit rough, but, you know, we have that strong win over the Lakers. They made the Lakers look silly. I mean, they were up 30 in like the third quarter, but Devin Booker was clearly still affected with his bout with COVID. And yeah, it seems like his oxygen is messed up. He's not totally conditioned. He's a bit winded and... Yeah, he's been, his play has been struggling as a result. You can't really blame him for that, you know. Maybe maybe he shouldn't have been going out in Italy with uh, Jenner, but, you know, we can't really complain about that too much. We can't really meddle in his, uh, you know, his private life. But, yeah, the Sun's a bit of a slow start, but I guarantee they're going to get right back on pace once Booker's uh, fully back and returned. And uh, the people can just give in some more effort, like three games in four days. You saw them clearly falter against the Blazers. They just weren't putting in effort, any effort at all on the defensive end. And the Blazers capitalized on every single look as well. So, yeah, that's really what turned them a loss in that final game that they played this week. And they don't even play until Wednesday. So they have quite a quite a big break like why can't they just spaced out those games a little bit instead of having to play three games in four days anyways the Timberwolves have also been very very good and the Timberwolves have made themselves into a legitimate team in the playoff conversation I know they just lost to the winless Pelicans today but you know just seeing this great start to the year Anthony Edwards is a massive part of it especially on the defensive ends I mean on offense and defense big contributor on both ends and yeah I think they've kind of got the pieces in place. I think they can put a rotation together that can make the playoffs. It's just a question of if they will. Is everything going to fall into place? Are all the players going to play well? Is the coach going to coach well? And, you know, I think they've given themselves a legitimate shot, and that's the best you can ask for at this point. But now it's time for them to capitalize and to turn out a winning, consistently winning team. And... We'll see what happens. I think Patrick Beverly played his first game today, and also they lost their first game today. So maybe that's not a great. Maybe maybe they shouldn't just they should just not play Patrick Beverly. I don't know. Maybe just Patrick Beverly equals losing. Uh, I just kind of I don't like Patrick Beverly. Anyways, Washington Wizards adding Spencer Dinwiddie, Kentavious Caldwell Pope, and Kyle Kuzma has clearly improved this team. I mean, Spencer Dinwiddie coming off of an ACL injury. There's a lot of people who were writing him off for some reason. That just didn't make, make any sense to me. Uh, he's not a player who's going to get slowed down by an ACL injury. That's not his game. He's not some hyper-explosive guard. No, he's a slow, crafty guard. And the ACL is not slowing him down at all. He's been great. And he led the Wizards to a win even in the absence of Bradley Beal against the Pacers. They did lose tonight against the Nets, even with Beal, but... Yeah, I'm still really impressed with this team. They're putting out a really nice five-man unit that's going to be very good in the Eastern Conference with Dinwiddie, Beal, KCP, Kuzma, and Daniel Gafford, along with a very good bench unit led by Denny Avdia. I think this team is, you know, they're setting up to be a great team in the Eastern Conference and compete for one of those top six seeds. And we got to recognize that with the number 12 spot. The Hawks at 13, a great start to the year. Uh, even offensively in the absence of Danilo Gallinari and Lou Williams. They've done a great job offensively, and a lot of it's been due to Cameron Reddish's play. And he's going to be very integral uh, integral to their success moving forward. If he can drop something like 15 points per game off of their bench while also being a very active defender, the Hawks have got a really nice core of players. You know, adding in Williams and Gallinari as well off the bench is very good scores. They got a, a starting lineup that can turn out to be a very good defensive group. They've got a ton of depth, and the, the Hawks are setting up to have a very good year. I mean, the Eastern Conference. A lot of teams in this Eastern Conference are stacking up to have a great year, and the Hawks are certainly one of them. The Bulls are now on a 4-0 start to the year, but 
I'm a little bit doubtful. They've had some weaker competitions. Some of the lowest ranked teams in my power rankings are the teams they beat this year. Two times against the Pistons, who are ranked number 30. Uh, once against the Pelicans, I think they're bottom five. The Raptors, they're also near the bottom. I definitely need to watch them play. And, you know, I, I really can't buy in unless I've actually seen them play. But, yeah, just seeing them win against weaker competition, like, it, this shouldn't be a surprise. I, I don't know if I can really overreact to this. Like, having a 1-2 and two team ahead of a 4-0 a and o team, I don't think it's that big of a deal considering just comparing the schedules right now. The Bulls have, a, a, have had a much easier schedule in comparison. But I'm fine with the Bulls proving me wrong. I definitely need to see them play on the court and see if this team is, you know, a legitimate Eastern Conference playoff threat. And they need to play some real talent, uh, some real, um, you know, competitors here. Like, you've played against a lot of the weaker teams in the league right now. So, let's see some real games out of the Bulls. The Blazers at 15, they have a strong win over the tired Phoenix Suns team playing their third game in four days. Uh, the main thing I want to point out about them is they have a good rotation of contributors just everyone on that team can really uh, contribute something to the game Lillard McCollum uh, they got Covington in there Nurkic and Powell in that starting lineup along with their bench unit adding in uh, Cody Zeller along with Anthony Simons taking a step up and Sear Little taking a step up and I'm blanking on I think there's a another person in there I'm blanking right now at the moment Let's see, I have their stats open. Uh, Larry Nance, there we go. Larry Nance has also been very good. And yeah, having that group of rotation players, it's solid, but I don't see them being one of the top teams in the Western Conference. And Lillard has had a quite a slow start to the year so far. Right now he's 0 for 8 from 3 going into the fourth quarter against the Clippers, and they're down 34 points. 32 points, actually. But yeah, uh... You need Lillard back, man. Lillard is what's got you to be successful in the past, and he's certainly going to be the one who pushes you to success again. You can't, I mean, at the end of the day, it's going to come down to him in terms of winning games. And right now, it looks like the Blazers are going to be dropping going into the next week. The Clippers, who are beating the Blazers right now for their first win on the season, have looked pretty good despite not winning a game. And uh, I think just improving their defense, Nick Batum returning, this is his second game back, and Terrence Mann getting an expanded role should it result in their defense getting uh, looking a lot better. And yeah, the Clippers, they're just getting back into rhythm, figuring out how Eric Bledsoe works with this team, uh, operating without Kawhi Leonard, Paul George. And, uh, you know, I mean, without Kawhi Leonard, Paul George is now going to have to take a bigger step up. And he's done that. And, you know, it's just the rest of the team also has to step up. And Reggie Jackson as well. I think this is his first good game. It's three for 15 from three. I'm just looking at the stat line right now with like nine minutes left in the game. He is three for 15 from three. <laughs> that is a bit wild. I wouldn't say that's a great stat line when you're 6 for 20 with 18 points. Like, <laughs> that's not the greatest in the world. <laughs> you're you're shooting you're shooting 20% from three. Okay. Anyways, the Clippers, they look pretty good. I still think they're going to be pretty good, even though they started off the year 0-2. But, yeah, got to be a bit, bit cautious with their first few losses right here. The Lakers, they're 1-2 and on the year, and they only have one win off of a missed free throw. I think there's clearly uh, still a lot to iron out with Westbrook being in and DeAndre Jordan has just been such a massive net negative for this team like he's just dragging this team down into the dirt down into the you know the depths of hell like it's just DeAndre Jordan is totally ruining this team they need to stop playing him they really just need to start Anthony Davis at the five like literally anyone would tell you who's watched the Lakers game except for the Lakers coach apparently they just can't figure that out but yeah they need to figure out Westbrook at point guard a lot of those possessions against the Grizzlies looked pretty good but it also had to deal with the Grizzlies just being bad defensively and I think the biggest thing that I saw was Russell Westbrook operating as a short role uh, a short role playmaker 
and just being the screen setting man for those pick and rolls i think that looks really good that's going to be your best way of opening things up on the offensive end is having westbrook operating as a role man and anthony davis as a floor spacer i can't believe i'm saying that but that's that's just how it's going to be it kind of feels like the bucks with them figuring out that Giannis should be a, a, a role man. It's exactly the same thing, if we're being honest. And teams are going to have to figure out how to cover it. Because I think the Lakers are going to be looking to go to that uh, type of offense quite a bit more going forward. The Nets at 18. They're now 2-2. Two and two, But that guy James Harden has noticeably been struggling. And it might be due to just not being as athletic as before. For whatever reason, he's just not as athletic. KD has been phenomenal, but Harden's been struggling in offense, and yeah, that kind of sucks, and they have to figure out a lot of these pieces. Where does Bruce Brown fit in? Where does Nick Claxton fit in? Where does uh, Blake Griffin fit in? How about uh, Joe Harris? Like, even him. And then adding in the new pieces, Paul Millsap, LaMarcus Aldridge, Javon Carter, and Patty Mills. There's a lot to figure out right there, and then there's always the impending situation with Kyrie Irving, what's going to happen there. There's a lot of turmoil right now with the Nets, and they really need to settle down going forward. The Kings at 19, and I'm sorry, there's only one reason they're here. It's Davion Mitchell. He has been fantastic. Such a great on-ball, one-on-one defender. And yeah, I mean, the, the, as I said, there's one reason. It's this guy. It's this guy, Davion Mitchell. If the Kings move up on the power rankings, it's going to be Davion Mitchell. If the Kings move down on the power rankings, it's going to be because uh, Davion Mitchell's injured. Uh, Mitchell can really push this team to new limits, being such a great defender. He's already top three, top five uh, defensively against guards. And there's so many great guards in the Western Conference, I mean, in either conference. And Mitchell is going to be such a, ma a major part of the Kings' success going forward. He's also a very, very good offensive weapon. And maybe he ends up starting at some point. We'll see what ends up happening. But Mitchell is just such a fantastic player. And that's going to just push the Kings even farther. Also, Harrison Barnes has had a great offensive start to the year. I want to check how many points per game he's scoring so far. Let me pull this up real quick because he's been very, very good to start the year. I think he dropped 24 in his most recent game against the Warriors. And on the year, he is averaging 28 points and 10 rebounds. That is wild for Harrison Barnes in the year 2021. And that's a good offensive contribution for this Kings team. The Pacers at 20, they've done okay in the absence of Karis LeVert and TJ Warren. And Rick Carlisle is noticeably looking better than Nate Bjorkren, but time will tell in terms of how much better the Pacers actually will be. I'm not exactly sure what the timetables are for Levert and Warren's returns, but hopefully it's soon because, you know, the Pacers could use a few extra bodies who can play valuable minutes, and I think the Pacers can still be a pretty good team in the Eastern Conference, it's just a lot of other teams have been looking better than them. The Celtics at 21, I did number that correctly, I did. The Celtics sticking at 21, this is where I rank them in my free agency power rankings. It's just, I mean, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum have been fantastic offensively. We can't deny that. Like, they're just so good. It's just they have nothing else. They're not great defensively. They're not a great passing team. They're not a great, you know, uh, they're just not really great at much else other than scoring the basketball. And there's a reason they've played now two overtime games to start the season, and they're two and two, one and one in those overtime games. It's because they've been struggling, and... They just need to find something other than scoring. They can't do anything else well. They can't, you know, create for others. They can't, you know, uh, you know, they can't get the offense moving. They can't consistently play defense. And there's a lot of issues right here with the Celtics. And Yudoka, as their head coach, really hasn't resolved any of them either. So we'll see what happens with the Celtics going forward. But they still have all the same issues I've been talking about this entire time. And... I don't really see them being resolved. I think they're still going to have those issues and it's still going to drag them down. The Mavericks, there's only one reason they're this slow and it's Jason Kidd. Offensively, they look like a train wreck and the team is just pretty much useless with Luka Doncic on the bench. The team is pretty much useless when the ball is not in Luka Doncic's hands, which is something that Kidd really just wants to incorporate into his offense, apparently, is that 
he wants other players to try to score and that just doesn't work and just put it in Doncic's hands man uh, there's a lot of issues with Jason Kidd's coaching so far and the roster construction of this team is still pretty not great so I don't think the Mavericks are going to be that good and it really opens the door for other Western Conference teams like the Timberwolves to take over their spot in you know that top 10 group of the Western Conference and that sucks I want to see the Mavericks prove me wrong but right now there's just so much discourse about how bad this Mavericks team has been and yeah, I mean, it's just not been great. Of course, Doncic is going to carry you to quite a few wins this, year, this season, but this coaching is just, it's just, it's just horrendous, man. It's just horrendous. The Raptors at 23. Scotty Barnes has looked good, but the Raptors are noticeably worse without, uh, why am I saying Kawhi? No, without Kyle Lowry. And I just don't know what the plan is offensively with this team. There's just a lot going out, uh, going on here. And Pascal Siakam, he's going to be out for probably another month. Like, this Raptors team is going to be dragged on quite a bit. And I don't really expect them to recover. I just don't see it in them, especially in a very loaded Eastern Conference. I don't have a lot of faith in this Raptors team, but they do end up higher than some of these other teams. Like the San Antonio Spurs. But Spurs have been great because of a former Raptor player, and that's Jakob Pertl. He's been amazing on both offense and defense. He's been playmaking quite a bit. And I definitely need to tune in to a Spurs game coming soon. Because, yeah, I've been impressed with the numbers I've been seeing from Jakob Pertl. But Keldon Johnson is going to be the difference maker for this team. He's had, I think in their one win so far this season, he had his best game of the year. And that's going to be the recipe for success with this team is going to be Keldon Johnson. I'm telling you, he's the future. He's going to be the one who makes it possible for the Spurs team is Keldon Johnson. You know, watch out for him to have a breakout season. Right now, he is averaging 21 points per game. And yeah, he's had 20 against the Bucks, 27 against the Nuggets, 15 against the Magic. Actually, 15 in their only win this year. Watch, watch out for this man. He's going to be very good, very, very good, and he's going to be everything for their success going forward. The Cavs at 25, Evan Mobley has been great, but three big lineups have not been. And they just beat the Nuggets, actually, and I'm impressed by that, but there's just not been a lot of great offensive possessions with this team, especially in the absence of, Ricky Ru uh, of Darius Garland, and you have to rely a lot more on Ricky Rubio. And, you know, uh, you know, some minutes when R Ricky Rubio has to be off the court, that's not a very good look. But Rubio and Garland and Sexton can salvage this offense, which is like the one good thing, because Bickerstaff's offense is just terrible. And they're going to still win a few games, and I think they're going to be on the rise going forward in the power rankings. But right now, they need to be more consistent. They need to go away from these crazy three big lineups and finally start Isaac Okoro and... Just run with it, man. They can be very successful, but just stop messing around with these three big lineups. Find something that works a little bit better defensively. You have such a great defensive weapon right there in Okoro. Why isn't he in the starting lineup? It's just a little bit confusing to me. I understand they just paid Markkanen, but you know, you have to realize that he's going to be on the bench, right? He didn't pay him expecting him to start, right? Right? Anyways, the Pelicans... 26 they just beat the Timberwolves tonight to get their first one of the season but I would like to point out just kind of peeking at the box scores Herb Jones has been great in, in terms of plus minus he's been I think at a plus 17 and a 16 point loss he was positive tonight against the Timberwolves in a very close game and I mean this team's clearly struggling in the absence of Zion Williamson but I think they've got pieces here they should be better than this they should be but they haven't been and that's just all I can say of this team. They should be better. The Rockets at 27. Jalen Green had an 8-3 game, which is ridiculous. And they have so many great, talented players, but they still have a lot to figure out. I can't really put them much higher than any of these other teams. The Magic at 28. Cole Anthony had a ridiculous stat line to win them their first game of the season. I think it was something like 26-12-8 with one turnover. Like, that's a very great stat line, but... I personally, sometime in the future, I need to see how these Wendell Carter and Mo, uh, Mo Bamba lineups actually look and work, because that's just a really interesting combination, uh, playing two pretty much true centers together, 
I just don't understand how that's going to work going forward and how they can consistently win games. Also, how is Jalen Suggs playing? I think he's just kind of faded into the background in comparison to some of these other rookies like, you know, <laughs> like Mobley and like Barnes and like Giddy and uh, and Jalen Green. He's just kind of faded into the background in comparison to those other players and Davion Mitchell, of course, he's also been great. The Thunder. Not have, I don't have a whole lot else to say other than Josh Giddy is a lot better than I thought he was going to be right away. He's got a nice handle and he's making those passes and he's making those reads. And that's exactly what the, the Thunder need out of him, especially in conjunction with their other weapons. But they just can't win basketball games at this point. They just don't have the talent and that kind of sucks. But yeah, that's just how it's going to be. And finally, the Pistons. I don't have a lot else to say other than there's no Cade Cunningham and I don't know if they have much hope of winning basketball games without him. They're just not very good. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you made it all the way to the end and you haven't already subscribed, please hit subscribe because you probably want to see more of my content. And yeah, hitting subscribe is the best way to do that. We're going to have weekly power rankings and if you want to see those, yeah, hit subscribe. Anyways, thanks for watching. I gotta go now. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.